following program is rated PG. The following program deals with mature subject matter and contains scenes of sexuality. Viewer discretion is advised. My sister Teresa lost another job because of rich boy Ethan Crane? Tell me I didn't hear you right, Whitney. At least she quit the cannery job. She wasn't fired this time. Forget about it, Whitney. I know my little sister's your best friend, but you can't make this better for her. Teresa screwed up. Again. Now she's in big trouble. Well, please don't be too mad at her, Louise. She's already so bummed about what happened. Well, she ought to feel bummed. It's time Teresa grew up and started thinking about other people besides herself. She doesn't mean to be selfish. She just gets caught up in those daydreams and fantasies of hers. That's right. Well, look where they've landed her, Whitney. Now, I thought she'd finally wised up about Ethan Crane. And as usual, now I'm going to come across like the bad guy. But Teresa needs a good dose of reality for her own sake. Or she's going to get knocked down so hard that one of these days she's never going to be able to get up. I mean it, Sheridan. This local girl picked the wrong guy to play her stalking game with. Do you have a lead on her name, Ethan? Doesn't matter. I know what she looks like. All I have to do is close my eyes and I can picture her face perfectly. Where are you going, Teresa? Um, I was gonna see myself out. I. I didn't want to disturb anyone. Oh, don't be silly. Ethan's on the phone with his Aunt Sheridan. She's on her way home from Paris tonight. Why don't you join me in the living room and we'll wait for him to finish his call. I know he wants to meet you. I said I was sorry. Give me a rag or something. Get it yourself. Hey! Wait! I'm so sorry. Here, this will get all the gunpowder. Get her problems. away from me. Oh, it's all right. It's like water. No! Oh my god! It's you! I don't want to be a bother. Um, maybe another time, okay? <laughs> Mrs. Crane was right about you. You're shy, but no excuses. You have to meet Ethan. He would never forgive me if I let you get away. He would actually like your help finding a girl who's been stalking him. Mm, come, come with me. Okay. I think it's an omen of good things to come, Mom. <laughs> What's that, Jared? You're feeling such a strong connection to your long-lost twin. I'm glad we're having something special to celebrate. No, well, you talked me into it. I am having the lobster Newberg. That was Grace's favorite. Have the lobster Newberg. No. <laughs> Not you, Grace. <laughs> Fine. Tease me all you want, Sam. But lobster Newberg is my favorite, and I'm in the mood to have all of my favorite things tonight. And you shall have them all. As long as you promise to keep that beautiful smile on your face forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try, Sam. Mm. I wonder if lobster Newberg reminds me of some special moment in my past. You know, a dinner I shared with my other family, maybe? I have another family. When I knew the first 20 years of my life, there's so many questions. And one day we'll find out all the answers. Mm. <clears throat> oh, are we embarrassing you, Jessica? Oh, no, Dad. I just love it when you and Mom are affectionate with each other in public. I was just wondering if you'd noticed how Kay's outfit looks different now than when she left the house. Well, the only thing I'm noticing is my youngest daughter is turning into a snitch and a troublemaker about her older sister. We did notice Kay's dress. We'll talk to her tonight when we get home. At the same time that we'll be finding out if there's anything else that you've done to her that we should know about. Chinese water torture would be too good for Jessica. I never believed you before, but your sister really is a mean. Yeah, a mean mutant to set me up with Reese the Geek when she knew I had my heart set on night with Miguel. This is the dirtiest trick she's ever pulled. One good thing. 
Mendy and Trevor left before they were sure who your date really was. Mm, that's something at least. They're the biggest gossips in the whole school. What about Miguel? He's still waiting for his mystery date to show up. Oh, no problem. I have a plan. Gee, that's so surprising. Okay, when the girl Miguel met at the carnival doesn't show up, but she won't because I never even talked to her, I'll act all hurt and upset for him. That works. Of course, I'll have to throw in a few zingers about what kind of a girl stands up a nice guy like Miguel, which will make the girl look like a bitch and me all sweet and adorable. I'll get basic points for being sympathetic and then bonus points for being cool enough to set him up with her in the first place. Is that brilliant or what, Simone? All right, I'm impressed, but aren't you forgetting somebody? No. Who? Oh, please. You mean Reese Turkey? Harmony's Choice Turkey? I can get rid of him without even trying. Which will leave just me and Miguel tonight the way it was supposed to be in the first place. You know, my grandma used to say to me, when life hands you lemons, make lemonade. I never really knew what she meant until now. Her hair is like white gold. I mean, it sparkles. And she's got the most amazing eyes. I mean, if you see her come in, please don't. You know, I, I did see her. A uh, girl fits your description. Came in a little while ago. Oh, yes. Give it to your heart, Dad. You don't have a heart, remember? Oh! Oh, no. They're both here. Do something, Talitha, before those twin sisters get together and Timmy and Talitha really die. What are you doing, Talitha? Talk to Timmy. Tabby, you're scaring Timmy. What are you doing, Tabitha? Can you hear me, Tabitha? This is no time for games. Answer me, Tabitha. Are you making the wind blow like that? I would hold the hand of the one Of the one who could sing so sweet And I would fly on the wings of the bird I knew could take me high as breathe in, breathe out You keep me alive You are the fire burning inside of me You are my passion for life Teresa's still not home, Whitney? Not yet, Luis. <sighs> Terrific. I'm already running late for my shift. I can't stick around waiting for her. Why don't I just have her call you when she gets home? I got a better idea. Why don't you tell me where my sister is right now? That way I can stop by on my way to work and see her in person. I'd tell you where she was if I could, Luis. Ah, but you can't. That's right, I can't. But I'm sure she'll be home soon, though. At least I hope she will. So do I. Home seems to be the only place where Teresa's safe from herself. Thanks for letting me vent before. You know, I don't mean to take out all my frustrations about Teresa on you. It's okay, Luis. I'm not a monster, Whitney. Uh, if I'm tough on Teresa, it's because I love her. Now, I worry about her like I worry about the rest of my family. If I dog her to get a job and then lose my temper when she can't keep one, it's because I hate having to see my family scramble living from paycheck to paycheck. You don't have to explain. Well, sometimes I feel like I do. That nobody understands why I'm so uptight about Teresa spending half her life in the mall shopping for things like clothing and jewelry. Things she can never afford. I'd buy it all for her, Whitney. Ten times over if I could. But I can't. Every penny that comes into this house has to be accounted for. And she understands that, Luis. I mean, she knows how hard you work for her and your mother and the rest of the family. I wonder. She just forgets. But she is crazy about her big brother, the cop. I mean, you should hear the way she talks about you. She is so proud. Well, then why does she try so hard to make herself different from the rest of the family by mooning after Ethan Crane, hotshot heir to the richest family in town? I mean, doesn't she get it? The guy is way out of her league, and that's exactly where he wants to be. None of the Cranes want anything to do with people like us. And every time our family crosses their path, we end up getting burned. I don't understand. My father disappeared many years ago on his way to work at Crane Industries. 
I've always suspected that someone in the Crane family knew more than they admitted. Well, why? I don't have any proof. I just know it in here. You know, and then there's Mama. She works her fingers to the bone every day in the Crane Mansion as their housekeeper. If you ask me, the Lopez Fitzgeralds have given enough of our blood, sweat, and tears to the Cranes for a lifetime. That's why you don't want Teresa near them? Teresa's beautiful, young, full of high spirits. She thinks she's invincible. But the Cranes have an iron grip on this town. Teresa gets tied up with them and they'll let her down. They'll crush that beautiful spirit right out of her. Now, I won't let that happen. I don't think she's going to be anywhere near the Cranes. I hope you're right. I want my sister to be happy. And she's never going to be unless she puts that idea of her and Ethan Crane out of her head for good. It's so outrageous that someone would come after you, of all people, Ethan. I'm sure Ethan will be off the phone in a minute. That's nice of you to say, Sheridan. But this local girl obviously has a vendetta against me. Well, it's interesting, though, that none of the accidents that she's caused have been life-threatening. True. So far, she's only taken a toll on my clothing. And my ego. Well, maybe there's another reason for what she's done. Sure there is. She's a painter who works in unorthodox materials, and she's picked me to be her canvas. I didn't mean that. Did it ever occur to you that maybe she's trying to get your attention? Yeah, well, I think she succeeded at that. Because she's got a crush on you? Did you just say she has a crush on me? I think we have a bad phone connection. <laughs> no, hear me out. It makes perfect sense. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I love paint and fish guts and ice cream on the girls I'm attracted to. I'm not saying that the girl is wound that tightly, but maybe it's some misguided attempt to get you to notice her, like her. Not only do I not like her, Sheridan, I loathe and detest her. I mean, if this is her idea of letting me know she loves me, then she's sicker than I thought. Aside from the fact that I, I'm nuts about Gwen, I could never love this girl. Not even if she was the last woman on Earth. I have to go, Gwen. What's... What's the matter, Teresa? Are you crying? Oh, no, it, it's, uh, it's just allergies. <laughs> well, I've got to hang up, Ethan. We should be landing soon. You sure you don't want me to pick you up? No. I had my new car dropped off at the airport. I'm looking forward to the drive home. Okay. I can't wait to see you, Sheridan. Same here. And Sheridan, don't let what happened with Jean-Luc turn you off from all men. I think you're going to meet the guy you deserve right here near home. Forget it, Ethan. <sighs> you know guys from anywhere for me. I've sworn off all of them. In fact, I pity the next guy who looks at me sideways. He might just end up paying for all my past mistakes. Well, I'm glad that you told me. I'll warn every male in sight. No, seriously. Sheridan, I'll make a deal with you. I'll put a stop to this girl who's been stalking me if you promise not to put yourself in a position to be hurt by another guy again. Deal, Ethan. See you soon. Who's that? Pilar's daughter, Teresa. She couldn't wait any longer. Oh, shoot, I wanted to talk with her. I'll be right back, Charity. I'm just going to go to the ladies' room. Okay, Mom. Hey, there you are, Simone. How's Kay doing? Oh, Kay's doing great. She's having a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. That's good. My sister's really something. She ought to be a juggler. She's so good at keeping things up in the air. <clears throat> Would you care to elaborate on that, Jessica? <laughs> All I meant was, Kay's really talented. I wish I could be more like her. Hmm. Well, we all excuse me. I'm going to go pat on my nose. I'll be right back. Thanks. Can you believe how careless some people are with other people's feelings, Miguel? Like who, Kay? That girl from the carnival that I set up to be your mystery date tonight? She shouldn't have said she'd show when she knew she wouldn't. I hate to say it, Miguel, but she stood you up. No, she didn't. I spoke to one of the waiters. He saw her come in. She's here. But that's impossible. You just didn't see her.
it go. Now, the thing that bugs me the most about the cranes is how they think they're better than the rest of us. That they believe they can get away with things that nobody else can. Unfortunately, they're usually right. What do you mean? Look, you know, I'm not blaming my boss, Sam Bennett. He just took over as police chief a couple weeks ago. But the old chief and the mayor, they constantly played favorites with the cranes. I mean, they looked the other way every time they broke the law. Well, that's not right. Tell me about it. You know, fair is fair, whether you're rich or poor. It's not supposed to be one set of rules for the rich folks and a whole other set for the rest of us. Well, can't you do something about it? Yeah, I can start treating the cranes the same way I treat everyone else. No special favors, no special deals. You do the crime, you do the time. I don't care what your last name is. You call me crazy, but I'm not going to play the game anymore. You know what? If it costs me my job, so be it. Now, at least I'll know I lost it doing the right thing. You know what? You are more like Teresa than I think you even know. Man, what's that supposed to mean? I mean, what you're saying. It sounds great, but don't you think it's kind of like Teresa and her dreams, a little unrealistic? I mean, the cranes are so powerful in this town. So just because they're holding all the cards, we're supposed to lay down and let the cranes walk all over us? Well... You ought to know it better than anybody that the fight's worth it, Whitney. Why me? Come on, let's get real here. I mean, your folks have done great. They're African Americans who have made it. And my parents have worked very hard for what they have. You've got it. They've worked hard, and so have their parents, and their parents before them, just like my people. And they fought battles that no one thought they had a chance in hell of winning, because if they knew that discrimination, whether it's based on color or class, is dead wrong. Now, I'm sure it wasn't easy for them. Now, it still isn't. But worthwhile things, like true justice for all, never are. Now, that's why I gotta take a stand. Now I know why Teresa looks up to you so much. Or maybe it's just like you said. I'm as big a dreamer in my own way as Teresa is in hers. Well, now I'm really late. Tell Teresa I'll talk to her tomorrow. I'm gonna make it my business to make sure that she doesn't talk to Ethan Crane and that family anymore. Can I at least warn her about how mad you are? Sure. But make sure you tell her it's because I love her so much. I won't stand by and watch anyone hurt my sister. Especially if they have the last name of Crane. Let Teresa go, Ethan. She wasn't feeling all that well. What was the matter? She said her allergies were acting up. Darn. I mean, I know it's a long shot, but maybe Pilar's daughter can help me track down that girl who's been stalking me. I know, but you can ask her tomorrow. Yeah, I will. So tell me about this Teresa anyway. Well, it's hard to tell. She was different now from when I first met her. How's that? Well, when I first met her, she was she was pretty tense and nervous. <laughs> Is that all that surprising? I mean, this place and all of us mm -hmm. has to be a little intimidating for our housekeeper's daughter. Well, that's exactly what I thought. Only now, when Teresa was leaving, she still seemed shy, but there was something else about her. Sadness, I thought. Well, that's strange. I hope nothing happened to make her feel bad while she was here. Maybe we should go to her house and check on her. That bad, Teresa? It was the worst night of my entire life, Whitney. Oh, no. Ethan recognized you, didn't he? Was he horribly mean? I mean, he didn't hurt you, did he? He never even saw my face, Whitney. You're kidding. Well, that's great. Why are you so upset? I opened up my heart to him about how I had a crush on him ever since I was a little girl. I told him about the dream world I made up when I was a kid. I imagined it as the one place where Ethan and I could be together. First, just as children, so each of us would have someone to play with when we were lonely. And then, later when I got older, was when I fantasized he would fall in love with me. You never told me about that. I never told anyone until tonight. I don't get it. You said Ethan didn't see you, so how did you get to tell him all this stuff? 
I was in his room and he was in the bathroom. I thought he could hear me, but he never heard one word I said. Then later I heard him talking about me. He even thinks I'm some whacked out psycho who's attacking him because I hate him. He sees me as a threat. He said he could never love me. Not if I was the last woman on earth. <laughs> Sure, Mom. Uh, can you believe this wind? Uh, it came up just like that. It must be because we're on the coast. No, I don't think that's it, Charity. You are great. I'm fine. How are you girls? I'm okay. But I've never felt such a strong wind inside the building before. Me neither. What is it, Chief Bennett? I think we're just getting the passing of a sea storm. I'm sure it'll die down as quickly as it came up. Don't worry, Kay. I'll hold you. Thanks anyways, Reese. I'm all right. I'm sure the wind will stop in a minute. It's all right, Kay. Most people are afraid of sparks, but once you realize where they come from, then you know that electricity is your friend. Everyone calm down. Obviously, we're getting some high winds from the ocean, but I'm sure it'll pass in a few moments. In the meantime, why don't we all move into the back room, but we won't feel the effect so much. One at a time. That's it. No cause for alarm. Everything is under control. There she is. Gwen, I mean, there's no reason for me to go over to Teresa's house tonight, especially if she's not feeling that great. I'll just talk to her tomorrow. Thank you, Ethan. We can toast to your Aunt Sheridan's homecoming. Just a minute. I want you to forget about what I said earlier. About what? That tirade I went on about poor people being gold diggers. I mean, I don't even know how those words came out of my mouth. It's a lousy thing to say, and I didn't mean it after all. Oh, I know, Ethan. You are the last person to be a snob. You like everybody, rich or poor, until they give you reason to think otherwise. You were just blowing off steam because you were angry that Sheridan was hurt. You got it. There's something else that you said tonight that I kind of liked. I heard you tell Sheridan how much you love me. It's true, Gwen. You're the love of my life. <laughs> uh -huh. Would you believe that Sheridan actually suggested that the girl who's been stalking me is doing it because she loves me? <laughs> And if that's what that girl thinks love is, I mean, I'd hate to think what she'd do if she hated me. I hate Ethan Crane. I just hate him, Whitney. I know you're hurt because of what you overheard, Teresa, but you've sworn off Ethan before and it didn't last. Ethan thinks just because people don't have their pockets stuffed with money or belong to some hoity-toity country club that they must be gold diggers. He actually said that? I thought he was different. Deep enough to know better. But he's not the man I thought he was at all. He's just a plain, ordinary snob like Louis said all rich people were. I wasn't going to bring up your older brother. But since you already did, 
don't know. How much does he know, Whitney? I'm sorry, Teresa. I had to tell him that you lost the job at the cannery. He was all set to drive over there and see you. Does he know I lost it because of Ethan? Oh, my gosh. He's gonna kill me. He was gonna find out sooner or later. He's gonna string me up by my thumbs. No, worse. He's gonna lock me up in my bedroom for the rest of my life. He'll probably make me wear one of those prisoner bracelets that tell my whereabouts. Calm down. It's not gonna be that bad. Just tell me what he said, Whitney. <sighs> Let's just say that when Luis left here, he was not very happy with the Crane family. He said he wasn't gonna let them get away with anything ever again. I'm sure he'll cool down in time. But I just hope he doesn't run into anybody named Crane tonight. I told you I was using Sheridan for a business deal, and that's the truth. Now, tomorrow the deal will be finalized, and that will be the end of Mademoiselle Crane in my life. You see, it's you I love, not Sheridan. Sheridan, don't let what happened with Jean-Luc turn you off from all men. I think you're gonna meet the guy you deserve right here near home. My sister would be fine if it weren't for the damn cranes and they're thinking they own this town. 98 in a 45 mile zone? A crazy jerk to kill himself. a couple of rounds in the tumble dry cycle in the dryer. <laughs> it was the wind you conjured up. You were spinning so fast it was like a tornado. Oh, were you scared, Timmy? Oh, no. Timmy wasn't scared at all. <laughs> you should have seen Timmy, Tabitha. Timmy knew exactly what you were doing. Controlling the elements from the start. Is that right, Timmy? <laughs> oh, yes. Great trick, Tabby. You should write a book about it. You know, about how you do these things? Jimmy Betts would be a bestseller. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, Miguel, you saved me. It's you. There she is. Kay. Kay, I'm sorry I lost you in the dark. I don't know how it happened. She's fine, Reese. Oh, my goodness. Sweet. Sam. Did you get any word on the storm? Not a one. Nobody knows what it was or where it came from. Where is she? Where could she have gone? Mom, the wind stopped. We don't have to run anywhere now. You don't understand, Charity. It wasn't an ordinary wind. We're not safe here. I can't believe I wasted all those years loving a man like that. I don't want to say I told you so, Teresa. It's okay, Whitney. You did, and so did Luis and McGill. I just couldn't bear the idea that all of you were right about Ethan. I guess I just wanted to see for myself. And now I have. I am through with Ethan and the rest of the Crane family. I swear to God, Winnie, this time I mean it. To my best friend in the world, Aunt Sheridan, who's on her way home where she's supposed to be. Hmm. To Sheridan, may she never be disappointed in love again. I hope the next time she finds someone worthy of her. Because God help him, whoever he is, if she doesn't think he's treating her right, she's in no mood to put up with that again. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's been a long day and I'm almost home. But the last thing I need is a lecture from a cop.
That's a bad move, mister. You shouldn't have done that. Yes, Lopez Fitzgerald. Some yuppie Yahoo speed demon's trying to outrun me. There's no way I'm letting them get away. I'll call you back when I've nailed them. Stop fussing over me, Mom. I'm okay. Now, Jessica, he won't be once I get my hands on you later. Sloan, you sure you're all right? Honest, Chief Bennett, I'm fine. Really. Any sign of your mystery date, Miguel? No. It's weird, Kay. I'm sure I saw her just before the lights went out. It's like she vanished into thin air. That's good news for us, Timmy. He's talking about our little charity. <laughs> My windstorm worked. Charity and her mother flew the coop before Grace Bennett discovered her long-lost identical twin sister. <laughs> Poor photo. Good job. And now for the grand finale to tonight's performance. We hunt down Faith and Charity and we eliminate them. Mom, you keep saying that it wasn't an ordinary windstorm, but if it didn't come from nature, then where did it come from? It came from hell, Charity. Look, they are out to destroy us tonight, but I will not let them hurt you. That's why we have to get away from here quickly before they find us again. You are so bad, you know that. I think this was a great idea. Well, we're both gonna think this is a really bad idea tomorrow. I mean, I'm gonna have to put in hours of extra tennis time to work off all these gazillion calories. These calories don't count. Oh, really? And why is that? Because I refuse to believe it. <laughs> I thought you gave up on all those fantasies, Teresa. Only one. Ethan. I've heard that before. And this time I mean it. And I'm gonna prove it. No. No. <laughs> you are not going to eat that. Watch me. <laughs> now, would I do that if I was still hung up on Ethan? I am free. Free. Free at last. I'm just glad I found out what he was really like before I wasted any more time dreaming about him. No more dreams. But I know you, Teresa. You have to dream about something. Well, you dream about winning Wimbledon, don't you, Whitney? That's right. I can see it in my mind, holding that trophy, my mom and dad and my sister Simone in the stands, so proud. Hey, doesn't your best friend get to be in your dream? Of course. Okay. And there you are, in the royal box, with all the dukes and duchesses. Oh, I like this dream. Now, do I look fabulous? Not if you keep eating all that whipped cream. Thanks. <laughs> so what are you going to dream about now, Teresa? Now that you claim you're not going to dream about Ethan. I'm not. He's become a distant memory. From now on, I'm going to concentrate on my dream of becoming a famous fashion designer. I'm going to have shows in New York, Milan, Paris. Oh, it'll be wonderful. I can see myself now walking out on the runway after one of my shows. Everyone's cheering. Am I going to be in the front row of one of these fashion shows? <sighs> Naturally. And if you're nice to me, I may even design your tennis outfit for Wimbledon. I am so honored. Of course, I'm not only going to design high fashion, expensive clothes. I'm going to design clothes for regular people, too. I think everyone should look as good as they can. Everyone should have a chance to make something of themselves. Live out their dreams. Why should people like Gwen Hotchkiss be the only ones who can get what they want? Are we still talking about clothes or Ethan? It's not fair, Whitney. Teresa. I know, I know. It was just a momentary slip. I mean it. I'm moving on. I have new dreams. Better ones. Good. To our dreams. May they all come true. For both of us. <laughs> I'm going to have to find the right man for Sheridan. Someone who's decent and caring and who adores her for the great person that she is. You really think there's a guy like that? Well, absolutely. I found you, didn't I? Mm-hmm. All I know is she better like him right off the bat. Sheridan always said she could tell everything she needed to know about a guy from the way he treated her during the first meeting. <laughs> Dudley do right must have gotten tired of chasing me and decided to go find himself a real criminal. I'm so sorry, Mickey. 
Miguel. I don't know where your surprise date disappeared to. She must have changed her mind. I don't buy it, Kay. I'm gonna keep looking for her. Gee, looks like Miguel would rather go look for some girl he hardly knows than hang around with you, Kay. If I were you, Jessica Bennett, I wouldn't come anywhere near me. Not after all you've done to ruin my date with Miguel tonight. What date? Your date is with Reese Turkey. Oops, <laughs> I mean Turkey. <sighs> I'm going to kill you, Jessica. Homicide's a serious offense, Kay. You know what? It's not homicide, it's bradicide. And there's not a jury in the world who would convict me. If I were you, I'd start sleeping with my eyes wide open, Jessica Bennett. <laughs> oh, I'm really scared, Kay. Grace, honey, you all right? Storm shake you up? No, Sam, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. You're talking to me here. You felt so good earlier. <sighs> yeah, I know. I know I don't, not at all. I feel like something's about to go wrong, and I don't know what it is. As much as Timmy and Joy, your homemade tornado, Tabitha, why don't Timmy and Tabitha get a good night's sleep before hunting down Faith and Charity? Absolutely not, Timmy. Time is of the essence. They're on the run, and you and I can't rest until we catch them and remove them as a threat. You can't honestly believe that the winds in the restaurant came from hell, Mom. It was probably just some extra strong winds from the ocean. Tell me the truth, Charity. Have you ever seen gale force winds like that before, anywhere inside or out? No. no well, then but... you have to trust me, because I know what I'm talking about, honey. I am sorry, but evil knows where we are and is after us. If we don't get away, it's going to kill us. Mm. Night, Ethan. See you in the morning, Gwen? Of course. What time is Sharon coming home? Well, she should be here any minute now. I can't wait for her to be back home. Oh, that is going to be so good for both of you. Yeah, she's been through so much. Maybe once she's back here in harmony, surrounded by the people who love and care for her, she can finally relax. Hmm. Okay, mister, out of the car with your hands up. Now! Mister, I don't think so. What the hell is he doing now?